Hey everyone, everyone. This, this is, is Matt, Matt and Cat Cat Things. Well, welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you the pouring of the concrete countertops, the ripping off the forms, and the reveal of the final product. Yeah, this is video number five of the whole process. So go back and look at those old ones. We're super happy with the way the countertops turned out. For sure. So let's just uh, jump in this video and show you where we're at. Bye. And also, if this video doesn't get too long, we're going to add in some lessons learned. Some of the things we would do again and some of the things we wouldn't. Good morning. Morning. What are we doing today? Today's a big day. We're pouring the concrete. Oh my God. Let's look at our setup here. So, we've got our bags of concrete, our bags of fiberglass mix, our pigment, our mixing bucket, water, our drill. We even have our little uh, cheat sheet. Uh, we had to make this up a little bit because they don't really address mixing the pigment in with this, but we got it. Here's our test sample that we made. Broke the form off of this morning, a little early, but this leading edge here is really smooth where the plastic form broke off. This, again, like I said earlier, this was a great step. No, don't do that one. Well, we're all done getting ready for what, hon? Countertops pouring the concrete. Nice. The mesh is done. Put down some cardboard and some plastic. Next stop, the pour. And we're all set up inside. So, let's get it. Can this rest here? No, definitely not. Dump about a quarter of it right there and just see what we get. You don't want to start Dude, in the corner? We'll be able, the weight's yeah, weird shouldn't you start it. in the corner? No, because he'll hit the thing. Mm. Is it, would it be better with a different bucket? I, it's just awkward. Yeah. You don't have to like. Should I help you? What if we go like this? Yeah. What if I get one end and you get an end and then you tip it? Or we both tip it.
Holy smokes, Bob. We did it. We did it. Well, it doesn't look too shabby, really. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean... I'm happy with it. Yeah. Still got some hard trial to do, but... We've been drying for how long now, Kat? Mm, like three hours. Three hours? Three and a half. Three and a half hours of drying and starting to see some of the, I don't know, final color maybe, that lighter gray. It's called gunmetal gray. So we'll check back in later. We waited three days before we decided to uh, break the forms off. The color is pretty awesome. So today the forms come off. First thing we have to do is we have to sand down the concrete off the front of the form so it doesn't pull any concrete from here when it breaks away. And we'll use a little diamond pad to do that. I'm gonna use this uh, gym pad. It's the diamond, diamond infused, I guess, pad that you get from uh, Z Counter Forms. And I'm using, I'm starting off with a 150. I guess you just keep rubbing it until all you can see is the top of the form separate from the... Wow, works easy. So I'm trying to do it two pieces over here. Wow. Now this one, so you want to, uh, I mean, uh, we're going to work it together. Oh, okay. Both at one time. Oh. Actually, I'm going to do it on this side. So first we just got to work this off. Yeah. should break in one piece? Well, it, it might. Let's start here. One, one yep. two, three. Nice. Wow. Wow. Now this is where this overhang is, so I gotta try that. Mm. Will that be stuck? Oh, look how great wow. that looks. That's so nice. Yeah. 
favor. Okay. Hmm. Not too shabby at all. Huh? Yeah, a little bit of. Looks good. We gotta take this out. Yeah. Gonna give it a love tap. Basically, I'm gonna take this out because it didn't sit. It overlapped a little bit more and sat proud of the stainless. So I'm gonna uh, take it out and then re-caulk it with black, but have it you know, more flush, look neater. But that'll be after I uh, patch these holes. Cat's cleaning off the countertops, getting all the last little bit of lint, whatever, and we are getting ready to seal them. We're gonna use this uh, Aquafane M35. It's actually a two-part two-part system. And it leaves a satin finish and protects against all the things that you have to worry about with concrete countertops. So, we get ready for this. Now we'd like to go over some lessons that we learned while we did the project. Some would change and some would do exactly the same the next time. Yeah. There's uh, there are some things that might not be clear enough in the video that we, we would do differently next time. So we'll go over those. Perhaps for me, the biggest thing that I would change has to deal with that form that goes against the wall, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, there's a form that goes against the wall on the back, and there's the front form. And these two forms is what you lay your screed on. And the back form was so close to the wall mm -hmm. that it didn't give you enough room to screed. When you screed, you're 
pushing the aggregate down and bringing the cream to the top with that vibration move. And if you don't have enough room to saw that thing back and forth, you don't get that vibration and you get less cream coming to the top. Let's, uh, let's break and show you what we mean. Okay, let me show you what we're talking about. This is your front form and that's your back form. Back form, of course, rests against the wall. What you can see is when you lay your screed on, you've got very little room before it falls off to move this screed back and forth. So a potential solution that I'm considering next time is moving this form and installing it, say, maybe a quarter inch off of the back wall. So there would be a gap behind it. That gap would give you now double the space to saw back and forth, making screening much more easier. Now, you'll have to take care of this space. My idea is to fill it with 100% silicone before the pour, and your backsplash is gonna rest and cover that anyway. And then you'll probably have a sealant underneath your backsplash. So I don't think there's any real issue with water here. You probably should check with concrete countertop solutions before you do this, or at least when you do your mock-up, try a solution where it's resting off the wall a bit and see if it works for you. But I'm almost sure that this is the way we'll do it next time because uh, it just really is not enough room to do a great screen. Yeah, another one was, um, you had some problems with the knockouts, didn't you? The faucet knockouts? Yeah. Well, besides me breaking the concrete, <laughs> uh, besides me breaking the concrete board, uh, the other trouble I had with those faucet knockouts were, I couldn't pull them out yeah. from the bottom as I think it was designed. I, I had to drill them out and break them into pieces to get them out. Maybe there's some sort of release agent you could put on it. Maybe some Vaseline or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe Concrete Countertop Solutions has the answer. But I've seen in other videos where people make a form uh, for their knockouts out of PVC pipe. Three quarter inch PVC pipe, one inch PVC pipe. I'm not sure, but... So you probably wouldn't use them again, or you would? If someone could tell me how to maybe put something on so it come out easier, I would probably do them again. Otherwise, I mean, they're $15 a piece and I destroyed them, so. Another thing that you have to consider is the finish after you pull those forms off. There were two results. There was, you know, you get a really shiny glass finish and then also there are some little holes that are left where the on the front edge. On the front edge. Yeah. So we'll talk about the vibrating tool. Yeah, that's why another lesson we learned was the vibrating the edges was really important. We probably didn't do it enough. There's a couple areas that we didn't. So what happens is if you don't use that vibrating tool on the front edge of the form, little tiny air holes fill up. And when you pull the form off, they look like little holes. Um, you have two options. You can buy a mixing compound, which I hope we caught some video of, and fill those holes in when you're done and sand them and you get that smooth finish, or you can leave them. Some people like that look. We chose on the leading edge around the sink to fill those with the filling compound and make that edge smooth. And on the front <laughs> edge of the countertop where pours down on the, over the front, we left the holes there. Mm -hmm. They, I thought they added a lot of character. Yeah. Did you? Did yeah, you, I liked them. Yeah. Would you do it again? Leave the holes on the front? Yeah, I think so. Cool. I did make a pretty big boo-boo with the, uh, that diamond pad, that sanding mm -hmm. pad. Uh, if you remember, right before we break the forms mm -hmm. off, I used the sanding pad to take off that thin film layer of concrete so I could pull the, the form off. You really gotta focus on that diamond pad, really 
we're bearing down on the plastic form and removing that concrete. Don't put too much pressure and sand the top of your concrete countertop because you'll burn through the crema and get to the aggregate pretty quick. And I actually have one little spot. I think I have a, I think I have a picture I'll show you. Okay. In the end, you can hardly see yeah, it. You but, don't notice it unless you point it out to someone. But when you, when you go through all this and you get to that final step and you mm -hmm. burn through one little spot, it hurts. <laughs> so take it easier with that, that uh, diamond pad. It will burn right through the, the top layer. Another thing is, is you really need to have someone there that's really strong. Um, you have to be able to lift the buckets of concrete and actually pour them into the form. And that's pretty difficult. It, it is. Luckily, we had our son-in-law with us and he's a beast. So his job was really to take the buckets after they, the growth and mix them up and, and pour them into the forms. Um, you've got to lift them up this high and you're talking about a 60 pound bag of concrete, you know, another maybe 10 pounds of water additives, you know, you're, you're pushing over 70 pounds each bucket to, uh, pour it up there. So you gotta have someone who can do it. Cause you can't like lean it on the edge of the form and tilt it in. You have to lift it up and over. And you couldn't do it because you were, I was, I was screeching. Right. So, and that brings up another point. Having another person I think would have been helpful because I was screeding, Travis was pouring the concrete in, you girls were mixing. Um, I really needed someone to do some trial work behind me because we got into it a little bit and all of a sudden while I was still screeding, 10 feet back, that concrete was ready to start being troweled. And if I had just kept screeding, I never, it would have gone it would have hardened up too fast. Luckily, I turned the screeding over to Cat and I started troweling, but having that extra person would have been a, a, a big help. And that brings up another thing. I think we mixed the concrete too thick. We could have made it a little thinner. I, I think so. I think it would have given us more time to actually do the screeding without rushing before it you know, settled. Yeah, we watched a lot of YouTube videos and I thought I had the right consistency. I followed the directions, obviously. I think it could have been a little thinner. It may have given us a little more time and it just would have been a little easier to manage. You'll, you can see in the video uh, the consistency. If there's anyone out there who really knows a lot about concrete, love to hear your opinion in the comments on if you think we could have gone thinner. I think the last thing would be cleanup. Mm -hmm. or the mess we made or didn't make. Do you think that we prepared ourselves well enough? I think so. I mean, we put plastic over every surface in the kitchen. Right. And thank goodness, because there was concrete everywhere. I think I even have a picture of a big handprint on the I wall. Think so. I, think, I think I'll put that in. It was all over us, all over the floor. We put plastic uh, from the leading edge of the form down to the floor and then had it run out into the floor a little bit. And we also put two layers of cardboard down on the floor and taped it all up everywhere we'd be walking. Cause you will grind that stuff right into a finished floor if you're not careful. So I, I don't, we didn't have any disasters based on prep. No. I think we prepped right. So if you look at the prep we did, that, that hit it out of the park, I'd yeah. say. I did go over in one of the earlier videos about our decision for coloring, um, we had decided to use a pigment that is added while you're mixing the concrete versus pouring it raw and then staining it after it's dried. And we've done staining after dry before in a, in a house we built in North Carolina, a camp we built in North Carolina. We stained the concrete floors and how would you describe the finish? It's almost like a, like when you do sponge painting almost. It's a little, it's got like a cloudy, wispy yeah. look to it, yeah. right? And we really wanted something a little more solid. Mm -hmm. So we decided to put the pigment right into the, uh, into the mix. And I'm going to say we're happy with that. Yeah. 
The color came out really nice. There's still variation. There's always going to be color variation in concrete, but um, it's much more solid and the variations are much more subtle and they look great. They look, it kind of looks like, kind of like worn leather mm -hmm. or elephant skin. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um, that's all I can think of. Mm -hmm. Would you do it again? Yeah, for sure. I think we are planning to do it again, actually, in the, on our apartment in this building. So we probably won't film it again, but we'll, uh, we'll show the final product for sure. We would love to hear any of you who take this leap and try this project yourself. Uh, please reach out in the comments and let us know how it turned out. We'd love to watch your video of the same thing. So... That's it. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.